Remember, there are six types of synovial joints that are based in what that joint can do in terms of um, the number of axes it's acting around and what it's based on its anatomy. Like, is it like a door hinge or is it like a ball in socket? <laughs> Two different examples. Um, and then for each of these, there are going to be muscles placed around the joint that allow for the body to move. Um, for something like this hinge joint, which here is the elbow, you might have a muscle going across this way. You do. <laughs> and so that's going to allow for that hinge movement when that muscle shortens. This is uniaxial. And uniaxial means there's one axis. You also can think of it as acting in one plane. So for your elbow, it's only acting in the sagittal plane. Okay, does that make sense? That sagittal plane is this one. Um, other joints, though, can act in more than one plane or axis. So let me draw this person and remind you of these directional terminology planes. Here is our sagittal plane, anything this direction. So when you're moving this direction, that's going to be flexion and extension. So going from how the joint moves to how that moves the body. The Atlas and axis is an example of a pivot joint. So like this, in this case, because of where the head is and where that's rotating, this is gonna be moving in the transverse plane, uniaxial. So these joints are always uniaxial. Um, they might not be always moving in the transverse plane because if they're located somewhere else in the body that's not here. Um, then some things like, Ball and socket, this is multi-axial. So what that means is depending on where the muscles are that are contracting, it can either move in the sagittal plane. So your shoulder muscle can do this when your arm lifts. Um, it also can move in the frontal or coronal plane. That's this one. Um, and that's a different movement your shoulder can do. It also can rotate, right? So it's kind of like more than one plane at once. It also can rotate in. Um, so it can um, move around the transverse plane as well. That's the one that's internal and external rotation. So where those muscles are, along with the function of the joint is gonna determine the body movement. Here's a simple example of the arm muscle. So in this case, you have muscle contraction. The muscle is across the joint. And that's gonna be important when we look at muscle attachments and um, their anatomy and attachments to make sense of that, right? If we want this joint to move in this way, let's put the muscles here in these places. So when this muscle contracts, you have a curling of the arm um, this, is, this is flexion in this case. Um, when that muscle relaxes, it lengthens and the arm moves back down, that's extension. Um, and that's in that sagittal plane. So a little preview of how the muscles are going to relate to this. What I want to do now though, is look at the names of the body movements related to these different planes. Um, Knowing the planes that they're in isn't necessary. It's just helpful, can be helpful for categorizing these different terms like flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, but it's not necessary. Um, so sagittal plane movements are going to be called flexion and extension. So movements this way, anything in this plane. Um, this could be your entire vertebral column, like, like this picture here. So flexion, extension. The one on the previous slide actually of the elbow joint is actually not shown on here. So this would be your elbow. If, if this is your elbow joint, this is flexion. And extension would be 
the opposite of that, your elbow, that's just straight hyperextension would be if you try to go past that. That same idea is for the knee, right? The hinge joint. However, flexion is back for the knee joint because flexion is typically, is decreasing the angle. That's a little more intuitive um, with a hinge joint. So with the forward and backward, you have to be thinking about forward as decreasing the angle. So this angle versus, get another color here. Yeah, I mean, that works, right? This angle is smaller than this angle. So flexion is always decreasing the angle. Extension is increasing that angle again. So the less intuitive examples, maybe, I think um, elbows and knees are the most intuitive besides remembering the, the, the knee, when, the, when you flex your knee, it's actually kicking back. It's the hamstrings doing that. Flexion of the shoulder though is not as intuitive. And this is where it can be helpful to think about that sagittal plane. Flexion of the shoulder is up this way. An extension would be, would be back behind you. That one, you extend back, right? You extend your arm back. Um, this one, the flexion, I think people don't use that as much in normal everyday life but it's movement in that sagittal plane um, and, and decreasing the angle with, with the axis of the body is what that angle is about. Okay, so we have, I think we did these first three, right? These shows vertebral column, knee and arm, elbows down here, and then there's the head. So again, because this is a decreased angle, there's flexion, extension, sagittal plane. This is not the sagittal plane. So all angular movements in the sagittal plane. Then there of course are movements in different planes other than sagittal. So coronal or frontal, right? That's the same thing or, and the transverse planes. So this is showing those two. Um, this one here, so arm going out and in, in the coronal plane or frontal plane, same with your legs going out. So like jumping jacks would be doing it, abducting and adducting with both sets of appendages. That is your coronal or frontal. And add, is adding together, so coming together. Abduction is the opposite of that. Um, to abduct someone, take it away. So abduct your arms, adduct them. Um, then we've got rotation, both like just side to side rotation, as well as talking about doing it specifically laterally or medially. So laterally would be outward rotation, inward rotation. The leg is shown here. I can't really show you my leg, but that rotation inward or outward, that is in the transverse plane. And the last one on here is circumduction. This one is complicated because it's basically using all of them. Um, maybe that's simple. So this would just be ball and socket joints that could do this. I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, and it's gonna be a combination of flexion, adduction, extension, adduction. Um, all four of those movements in one, right? Flex, extension, abduction, and adduction in order to move in a circle circle. Okay, then we have special movements. Um, so some specialized movements that only the feet and arm can do. So these are terms that only apply to the arms or feet. Um, one of them is a type of rotation. So this is in the arm, right? So actually arm is that way, feet is that way. Pronation, 
in supination. Um, so we talked about parallel here and we kind of might come back to that, but supination is when you're holding soup. So this is like anatomical position. In anatomical position, you are in the supinate, supine, right? But this refers to the movement. So going from anatomical to opposite, rotating and face down, that is the internal rotation. That's also called pronation when it's for the arm. So internal rotation of the arm is called pronation. Um, a external rotation would be supination, going to the supine position. Then the feet, there's a couple different specialized um, movements. If you go up on your heels, walk on your heels, that's dorsiflexion. So you're flexing because you're going in that sagittal plane. Both of these are going in the sagittal plane, so they're both called flexion. Um, but dorsi is like dorsal's back. So I kind of think of it as like your foot's going back. This, this part's going back. And then plantar flexion is on your toes or the, the kind of the pad of your foot. Um, and that's you're planting your feet, right? You're in a more stable, um, not really, but maybe <laughs> on your toes, that's plantar flexion. So both of those in the sagittal plane and specific to the feet. And also with the feet, you have eversion and inversion. So inversion is kind of tilting your foot in. So you're standing on the outsides of your feet and eversion is out. So you're on the medial sides. Um, won't use those a whole lot, but I think it is useful to think about how a joint can have more than one movement. And sometimes that's because it's multiaxial. Sometimes it's because there's more than one joint in there. So the foot's gonna be an example of that. And arm too, actually, right? These movements you're seeing right here um, are not just the hinge, both. So the foot, um, it, it can hinge, but also can do this eversion, inversion, even though it's not a ball and socket joint because it has more than one joint within it that allow for different movements. Okay, last set of movements um, are in the jaw. So the, this is um, somewhat intuitive terms, I think. So you can have elevation and depression, up and down. And then you also can have forward and back. So protraction, is forward and retraction is back. The mandible is your lower jaw and it's actually the only part of your facial muscles or, or skull, cranial muscles that, um, um, bones that move when you choose. It's really the one that mandible is the only one that moves. 